In previous videos, we have explored how to consume JSON services in Android. In this video, we're going to explore how to make a service that creates JSON data that can be consumed by Android or by anything else that consumes JSON. Uh, JSON can be consumed on the web. It can be consumed in several different apps. It's really kind of an independent JavaScript-based data format that can be used in several applications. So one of the first things we have to decide is where are we going to host our JSON app? We're going to have to have some place where we can host a JSON app. Uh, in, for, in the case of the live plant places, uh, there is a, there's a web provider that we've subscribed to that provides MySQL and Perl. MySQL and Perl are pretty ubiquitous. You'll find those on a lot of Linux or Unix-based web hosts. So even if you don't have experience with those before, it might be worth finding a simple script that you can borrow uh, to create a web service. And those are the things we're going to look at today. So for me, I am going to use UC File Space, which is available to students, faculty, and staff at UC. I'm sure many other universities will have a similar thing, but it is basically a web service, or uh, sorry, a web account for students, faculty, and staff. It does include Perl scripting, and it also includes a MySQL database. So we're going to set up the MySQL database, but it's important to think at first, what will the tables look like? Put some time into this, because the table structure really needs to be a bit forward thinking. It needs to be ahead of your app itself. So for example, if I look at the Live Plant Places website, what we're going to see is that I can search by a plant name and I can say Magnolia and as I start typing it's going to automatically complete. This autocomplete is fed by a web service. Now we see here, let's look at Magnolia Acuminata, which is cucumber tree magnolia. That's a specific kind of magnolia tree. But we have to think, what is a tree? Is the concept of a tree. And then what is a specimen? Which is a specific tree we can touch. So there's a concept of this thing called a cucumber tree magnolia. There are certain things we can say about the concept of cucumber tree magnolia. The family, the genus, the species, the origin. That's true for every cucumber tree magnolia. Uh, okay, now as we scroll down, what we're going to do is we're going to see pictures of specific cucumber tree magnolias, and these are all different. You see, we see several pictures. Here's one at Spring Grove Cemetery, United States Capitol, Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Garden, and uh, Jardin des Plantes in uh, Paris, Halifax, each of these are different examples of a cucumber tree magnolia. And so those need to be stored in different, another one in France, those need to be stored in a different table. And these are the things that we need to think about as we're designing our database. So how's it going to look? Well, I'm going to bring up a diagramming tool, Visio. And what we're going to do is we're going to drop an entity here. Let me see if I can resize this, get this fit a little bit better on our screen. Um, not really. Well, let's see. Okay. So I'm going to drop an entity. This is going to be our table named plants. That represents the concept of a plant. Then I'll drop another entity, and we're going to call this entity a specimen, where a specimen is a specific plant. And then I might drop another entity which would be uh, photos or a photo. Okay, we should keep our plural singular, keep it consistent. So uh, make it photos, uh, make it specimens, and make it uh, plants if we want, or keep it singular consistently as long as we stay consistent. And now what we can do is we can start to draw some relationships across these tables. So I might say, uh, okay, draw from the plants table to the specimens table. And this would be a one-to-many relationship. Uh, looks like I might have that guy backwards. Let me flip him around, flip the crow's feet around. Um, what we're saying is that one plant, like the cucumber tree magnolia, that looks a little bit better, 
one cucumber tree magnolia can have many specimens around the world. Okay, so I'm going to come down and we think about photos. Now I'm going to go out and take a picture of a specimen. And a picture is going to belong to a specimen, not to a plant. So I'm going to draw another relationship here. And let's see, we will do there first, just the specimen. And then we're going to drag this guy. If I can grab it okay, over to photos. So we're going to indicate that one specimen uh, can have multiple photos. So I might go out and take pictures of multiple specimens. So this is how I want the database to be set up in general. But really, all I need for my JSON structure is this plants table. Plants table will give me what I need. That will give me the ability to go on to my Android app and do an autocomplete or something like that based on plant name. So this is what we're going to start with. Uh, and in the next video, I'm actually going to create this table in a uh, MySQL PHP MyAdmin interface. Thank you.